For many dogs, coming to a shelter like this is the end of the road. Because of the huge pet overpopulation problem here in the United States, there just aren't enough homes to accommodate all of the animals that come here. However, some dogs are going to be lucky because they're going to get a second chance. I'm Victoria Stillwell. Join me as I travel the US and discover stories of dogs and humans impacting each other's lives for the better. This is American Dog. I'm here outside of Atlanta at Gwinnett County Jail. You might think a jail is the very last place you'd find a whole load of dogs. But here at Gwinnett County Jail, they have an amazing jail dogs program called Operation Second Chance. The Jail Dogs program has just celebrated its second anniversary. It is a program that is a partnership between the Sheriff's Department in Gwinnett and Society of Humane Friends of Georgia, which is a private nonprofit rescue group. We started with a couple of dogs and it didn't take long to get up to 15 and then build up from there. Uh, it was just great from the beginning. We get our dogs from animal control, which if they stay there, more than likely they run out of time and unfortunately will be euthanized because they can only handle so many dogs. So we keep the dogs until they get adopted. Once they get adopted, we go right back to animal control and save another life. All the funds that were expended for the program were taken out of the inmate funds, which are profits made from the commissary, so it didn't cost any money for the taxpayers. We started the program in February of 2010 and we've saved 96 dogs to date with 113 being saved and currently 17 in the unit. Being a woman and going into a jail and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what are these guys going to be like? And then I came into the program and met some of the inmates and I was like, wow, this is great. These guys are really into this program, really eager to learn and they're very, very respectful. Anybody that loves a dog knows that you know, there's nothing like it. The inmates learn that and they communicate with the deputies in a completely different manner. We have a waiting list of inmates that want to be in this housing unit. So that in itself promotes better behavior with the inmates. These great wonderful dogs, are not, they're not being euthanized. They're actually having a second chance to be alive and to do something and go to a home. And also for the inmates because you, you see a spark, that glimmer that you normally don't see. And maybe a chance, a hope that when they get out of here that they're going to go do something better with their life. My name is uh, William Hartman. I have a burglary charge and two felony possessions and a theft by taking. The way we get in this program is typically when we're in pop, uh, general population, they have applications for different work pods and stuff like that. We volunteer, we fill out an application. You know, we're sitting here waiting for court dates, waiting to go down the road, and we have the opportunity to do something positive. Uh, my name is Will Smith. I'm in Gwinnett County Detention Center on a violation of probation. Before I came here, I mean, like I said, I was working 24-7, not seeing none of my family. I mean, the only thing I was surviving off was five hours energy drinks. I'm Roger Duncan. I've been in the program for about seven months. How did you come here to the prison? Unfortunately, a uh, possession of cocaine. I don't know if this is wrong of me to say, but my way of handling things was always fighting, arguing, hitting. I come here, I don't have that. I want to get out, I don't want nothing to happen to nobody, or especially the animals after being through this. Show me the kind of stuff that you've All been right. working with him. Baby, sit. 
stay. Tack. Sit. Papa. Okay. Good boy. That's making this dog absolutely adoptable, isn't it? It's getting right. the dog to the point where family comes along and says, oh my gosh, the dog can do so many things. Right. Through these little tricks and these little training methods, mm. they can gain this bond with the dog. Yeah. Like the feeling of having the dog follow you without a leash. Do it. Go on then. How many people would like to be able to do what he's just done with his dog? Getting a dog to heal right next to you off leash is very hard, especially when there's so many distractions around. But that's testament to the amount of time that these guys give these dogs. Goodness me. Hi. Hello. You're so awesome. Look at you. Hi. And I, that, that walk is just, it's just going to get him adopted too. Animals can definitely bring people out, change the way we feel. We watch it every day. I mean, you've got guys in here whose whole life they've acted tough. They've had to show face. They didn't want somebody taken from them. And a dog will get adopted and five or six of us will be in our rooms crying. Um, being that you're in jail, I mean, you don't want to cry around inmates, but I mean, you actually be in your cell and think about the good times, reminisces on your accomplishments with them and looking at pictures. I mean, it actually, you actually tear up, you know, not that I'm scared of anything, but that's the sensitive side of me. It's, it's upsetting. The, the last one, I had tears in my eyes, and this one here, I know is not going to be here long. Very cute. Yeah, somebody's going to take this dog quick. Once we get to show people what we do when they come look at the dogs and all that, then they're really, I mean, they're just, the glow on their face, they're like, wow, that's amazing, y'all did that. But these guys do a wonderful job in here. Um, Wayne, tell me a little bit about Queenie. Okay, this, her name is Queenie. I'm the primary one. And she's like a lab mix yeah. with a pit. And um, she's very athletic. She does the drill, agility. She does frisbee training. And she's got it. Um, she's very strong in obedience, also. How long have you worked with her for? Um, eight months now. Eight so months? June of last year. Yes. Really? So you must have a very strong bond with her. Yes, I do. How she changed you? I deal with patience more because, you know, when you're trying to teach them something, if you don't get it on the first, second, or third time, you got to be consistent with it. So patience was the most important thing that she taught me. I hear you do some pretty spectacular stuff with Queenie. Yes, we does the agility track. Okay, can we see that? Yes, we can. Can I see it? All right, take her away. We have a star agility dog here. What's so great about this is that you're really making her more adoptable. <laughs> That's fabulous. Thank you, Wayne. That's awesome. Man. Oh, don't worry. Don't worry about it. It's great. It's great to see it. Thank you. A lot of these things, the things that these dogs need is love. So we're here to give these dogs something they need. They're giving it back to us in return. And a lot of us have never had love. A lot of us have, you know, come from broken homes or you know shattered situations and you know we're broken as broken as they are and it's like we get into a situation like this where there's this mutual love going on and it's it's not something a lot of us have felt before and it's you know it, it, it could be something that triggers us to realize the life that we are living realize the harm that we are doing to people for for absolutely no reason Good boy. So already I see he brings a smile to your face. Oh yeah. Your eyes light up. How are you going to feel when he goes? Uh, I'm just thinking about it now. It's kind of kind of getting me there. Because I, I know it's going to be one day soon. So. Tell me a little bit about Petey. Uh, I'm going to say he's 
five months old. He was left at a bus stop. I mean, very skittish he was, but uh, he warms up really good. I mean, uh, he's lost nine baby teeth, uh, so he's getting his big boy teeth growing in, I guess you would say. He was shaking to death, very, very scared, very skittish. He didn't even want to come to me. Uh, I had to do forcefully grab him and do as the uh, trainer told me to do, take him to the room, sit on the floor, and let him come to me. Uh, and like I say, within the hour, he came to me and started warming up. And from then on, that night, before that night came, we were, we were playing. He was all over the bed. I mean, but he was real skittish of everybody else. Dogs are being abused or being left somewhere. They don't warm up that easy. And I, I, he felt it through me. He knew that, I mean, he could tell that from the first hour that I was gonna be there for him. I wasn't leaving him and he wasn't leaving me. So, I mean, I guess it's just uh, something he sensed and I sensed. I mean, if it wasn't all there, I mean, he wouldn't have sensed it. I wouldn't sense it. I mean, it's just something natural inside you. You'll know when things are the way they're supposed to be. My responsibilities, I know certain things I have to do, certain training methods I have to do, certain times I have to train. It's not just, I'll just put some water down certain times a day. It's more to it than that. And I want the dog to be very smart, which he is already. So there's more, more going on, more on my plate, more in my schedule than would normal, but normally be. I feel like I've done something amazing I've never done. I mean, just to know that I've done something, success, something successful like that and got the dog from where it came from, a bus stop and left in a bus stop in a crate to learning all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it makes me feel really, really good. Like I've really done something. You want to think you've done something that nobody else done, but they have. I mean, just, it just makes you feel good. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a better person for the program. I mean, out of all the jails in the United States, I mean, this had to be, you know what I'm saying, this would be something that should be in every state, every county jail, every prison. So Operation Second Chance, I vote for it to be in every jail. These are the kinds of things that, that change the world in a positive way. If they can take people like us, the, the dregs of society, if you will, and instill this in us, then surely, you could steal it and instill it in everyone. From what we know, it was that he was initially seen um, and turned into the, I guess, the animal shelter. Um, he was found tied up by a wire to a bumper of a truck. He entered the program about six months before we met him and brought him home to us. Uh, he had never been in a yard before, just like he had never been in a house. We fenced in the whole backyard for him, and we have a little pond back there, so he has his own little drinking bowl, I guess you could say. I tell many people that we adopted Playboy, but he's actually kind of adopted us. Um, I think the jail dog program is a, is a great way to rehabilitate both the persons in jail and the dogs. This program allows the dogs to have that opportunity to survive and to be taken into homes. And at the same time, the prisoners have the opportunity to have that heartfelt connection with the creature. I just can't imagine how that doesn't soften uh, any soul. He would probably not be alive if it wasn't for that program saving him. I know I'll, I'll do it again, and I, I think that's the best recommendation anybody could do. I'm very grateful for the jail dog program and everything that they've done for us and the joy that they brought into this house because of, because of him and their program. We have uh, promoted the program with other sheriffs in the state and have some interest from several. So hopefully it'll expand because it'll save more dogs. And there's plenty of room to uh, save dogs in the state of Georgia. The success of the jail dogs program here at Gwinnett County Jail sets an example for other jails around the country. If more prisons did this, more animals' lives would be saved, more people would be helped. I'm Victoria Stilwell for American Dog.